got to make some. Appreciate that too. You know, he, he keeps us from going back far, right? Yes, praise God, Chicago. Yes, hallelujah, folks. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, this banner is straight to the point, folks. It says, uh, let's see here. It says this, attention, lukewarm Christians, Jesus will vomit you out of his mouth. Now, I know that sounds unpleasant. Some people might be thinking, he talking about vomiting me out of his mouth. Well, the thing is, see, Jesus said that he prefers that you be either hot nor cold because you are lukewarm. He will spew you out of his mouth. Now, if any of y'all have ever um, gotten in a car, if it's hot, you leave a spot in there or something, or water. And that thing gets a little bit lukewarm. It's not very appeasing to uh, drink that. I mean, like if you're at this game today and you leave your drink in the sun too long and you try to take a sip of that, it's not going to be... Uh... Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't condone beer, um, but, you know, if you leave a beer on it gets hot, it's not very pleasant. And that's the same thing to Jesus because, because the thing is, you're not living fully for Him. And that's, that's why we come out here today, folks. Hallelujah. And see, the other side of it says, uh, the wrath of God abides upon the children of disobedience. So see, we, we brought uh, visual aids out here today for class because, folks, we want you to we want you to know the Lord, you know? Because the thing is, we live in a fallen world. We live in a world of sin. You know, when, when Adam and Eve... I want to blow y'all's eardrums out here. I know this is loud. God bless you, man. You want to try Hey, hold on, I got one for you right here. Let's see if I got that. Yeah, here you go, young man. Got that for you. Take that. It's a good one, man. It's got the truth on it. It's got good news and bad news. See, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is, is that Jesus Christ died on the cross at Calvary. I'll get on this side. I'll stay right here so I can guard it. That Jesus Christ died on the cross at Calvary so you could be forgiven for your sins. I could be forgiven. My brother could be forgiven. Anybody out here could be forgiven for your sins. Now the bad news is, is that all have fallen short of the glory of God. You know that, man? Well, that's good. <laughs> hey, she knows that. She's way ahead of most people. Most people nowadays ask, I guarantee you, as soon as I said that, now, now, the Word of God says, even if you act like you can't hear me, I know you're listening. The Word of God says that there's not one good, no, not one. There's not one good. Nobody out here is good. Nobody out here is good. Because we've all fallen short of the glory of God. See, mankind fell in Adam and Eve, and we have to be redeemed back to God, sir. Hallelujah. I want you to be See, I want him to be redeemed back to God. Now, that lady who walked by a second ago, she agreed with me that she's not good. Hallelujah. She's one of the most. And see, that's humility. Now, the Bible tells us that God resists the proud, resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Now, we don't... Oh, yeah, yeah. No. Oh, sir, I'm sorry. We're, we're right where the Spirit led us, man. I'm sorry. Hey, the Lord's trying to reach you today. The Lord's trying to speak to you. I know, I know, it's not, see, but see, that's proof. If this is annoying you, if this is disrupting your, your lunch, I mean, we're, we're not out here to agitate you, seriously. But the Word of God is going to do that regardless. Preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified and forgiveness of sin and repentance from sin, it brings conviction to the human heart. Because the thing is, folks, that the Word itself is a testimony of the reality of God because when you see the reaction that people get, like that gentleman, I'm not picking on him, I love him. All the time. Amen. God is good all the time, but, but we're not good all the time. We're not. I'm not. Without the Holy Spirit, I'm not good. And that's the problem, folks. See, if we have the Holy Spirit, then you'll love the Word of God. See, the Bible tells us that the message of the cross 
that's the gospel of Jesus. You know, somebody preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ like we're doing out here today. It's foolishness to them that are perishing. But to those, my brother, my brothers and me and our brothers over there that are being saved, it is the power of God. You know? It's sustenance. It's sustenance. Now the thing is, if your heart is given over to sin, then you're in bondage to the kingdom of darkness. The Bible says that he that practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. I'm pointing up. Everybody, if you can't see me, I'm, I'm using visual aids today, class. If you're in the back of the line, in the back of the class, you can't see. I'm pointing up to the sky. I'm pointing to the God of the Bible, Jehovah. And it says that if you sin, you're of the devil. It's not my words, it's his. And I used to be of the devil. You know what? I would say the 96 to 7 percent of my life, I've been a disciple of the devil. But that, but that three, four percent of my life that I've actually been obedient to God and obeyed Jesus and kept His words and really strived to have that relationship with Him far outweighs all the pleasures of sin from that 95, 96, 97 percent. In fact, it doesn't even compare. It's like it's like comparing one of these uh, where the gun has gotten stuck on the ground and it turns into that black licorice looking stuff. You got to pressure wash it off. That's what it's compared to. Compared to that with a nice piece of cake or something. I'm not trying to degrade the power of God with a piece of cake, but I'm giving you a carnal example. But see, that's the problem with this world is that we're, we're blinded. See, we what is real to us, the way that we define real, is by what you can taste, touch, smell, and see. But see, the Bible tells us that the things seen are temporary. All this is temporary. All this is temporary. This Cubs game is temporary. It's going to end. This day is temporary. Our lives are temporary. This vessel of flesh is temporary. The Word of God tells us that the flesh, talking about this body, our bodies, your body, is as grass. And the glories of man. I mean, you look around the city, it's beautiful. I really like this city. I like Chicago. Probably one of my favorite cities. Especially one of my favorite places to preach. Because there's so many people. So many people that can get the Word of God. And that makes me happy. That, that makes me happy to know that somebody's getting it. And it says that those glories of man are like the flower thereof. So your flesh, see that's how, it, it, it's metaphorical, you know. God's talking about that the seasons will change. You gotta think God's been on his throne. I mean, he's been, he was here, he was in the beginning, he was in the end. He he was there before anything, and he'll be there after everything is gone. If that ever comes to that point. He's satisfied within himself, you see. Oh, he's the source of love. He's the source of goodness. But he's also the source of wrath and justice. See, if you get in trouble with the law and you go to a court and the judge throws down a judgment on you, but this day we've got so many liberal activists and uh, communists in the district attorneys and judges, not all of them, but they don't even punish crime anymore, so, uh, oh, you're good. Listen.
praise God for our elders. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, folks, Jesus Christ can save you from sin. Jesus Christ can save you from hell. You see, that's the only way to be forgiven of sin is through Jesus. That's why Jesus died on the cross. When Jesus said it is finished, that means that your sins are forgiven. Your plan of salvation is done. He was hanging there on the cross. He's got nails through his feet and his hands. And you know why he did that? You know why he took that beating? You know why he went through all that punishment? You know why he sacrificed his life? So you could be forgiven of sins, folks. And that's what we want. But people's hearts are given over to sin. Well, the Word of God tells us that God looks down on the earth and He sees men, they just drink and it like water, man. They're just turning it up. And we've all done that. We've all done that. Maybe it's, uh, maybe you're, you're smoking cigarettes, vaping. Maybe you got a problem with alcohol, drugs. Maybe somebody's greedy. Your heart's given over to, to money. But see, Jesus can deliver from those things. Jesus can save you from those things. Jesus can take a, he can take a homosexual and make it straight. He can make a, a fornicator, someone who's having sex outside marriage. Too much everybody's done that. And he can make them respect the confines of marriage. Yes. Because he saves the soul from sin. See, he cuts that bondage off. It's like his spiritual sword just comes down and hacks it off. Just hacks it off. And, and you don't even know the dread bondage. You know, if you look at the Old Testament, they were slaves to Israel, uh, to Egypt, right? The Israelites were slaves to Egypt for 400 years. And they built all these great things for the Egyptians. And they were in bondage. And guess who freed them? God. The God of the Bible. He sent Moses to free them. And see, he sent Jesus to free us all. So that we can have the, the Holy Spirit. So we can be born again. Oh, it's the greatest thing ever, folks. It's greater than this Cubs game. This Cubs game don't even touch it. But Jesus, Jesus will touch you. Jesus will, will give you a new heart, a new mind. You know, the Word tells us, Be not conformed to the world, but be renewed by the refreshing of your mind, that you may perform what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And the only way that we can execute that, whatever that will is, for each and every individual life, is we got to be in communion with God, right? Guess how that's done? Through Jesus. Hallelujah. That's how. Because when you're free from sin, it's like you're, it's like you're chained, man. Oh! Spiritually you are. I mean, we feel free in our flesh. You know, I can do whatever I want. I can go wherever I want. I, I, got, I, got, I, can, I can go down here if I want to. I can go to the game. I can get high. I can, whatever I want to do. But that's an illusion, folks. Because the safest thing for your soul which is going to come out of your body in the end, it tells us that the, it's appointed that a man wants to die, and then comes the judgment. And you're not going to pass that judgment if you don't know Jesus. If Jesus doesn't know you. If you're not in the Lamb's Book of Life, your name can be written on a big fat check. It can be written on the deed to the nicest house in, in Chicago. But it's not going to matter in the end. Jesus said that what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world? What does it profit you folks if you gain the whole world? If you had all the money in the world, if you were Jeff Bezos, if you were Elon Musk with all this money and power and influence, right? What does it gain you? Because guess what? They're going to die too. They're going to pass away one day. Their bodies are going to expire. And then their souls got to go somewhere. And you have to have faith and trust in Jesus to be set free from that penalty of death, which is hell, the second death. That's what it's talking about. It talks about the Bible that they will be, they'll be, they'll experience the second death, and it's eternal death. It's just, it's constant pain and sorrow. It's, I mean, we had nothing to do with it. It was created for the angel and his devils. But since mankind has chosen to sin, since they believe the lie that Lucifer told them from the right at the very beginning, God said to our first parents, Sin is a deadly force, and the day you partake of it, you will die. And they did die. They died spiritually. And then their flesh started to erode, waste away over time. But guess what? They still, they still, but God told them when He kicked them out that I will send a Redeemer. He made a promise to them that He would send a Redeemer. And that Redeemer is Jesus Christ. And folks, I'm telling you, you've got to wake up. Jesus is calling out to you today. He's calling you. You gotta wake up, enter that call to God, and hit your knees and submit purity to God with your whole heart. Yes, you too, sir. He loves you. He wants you to be saved. I don't want you to go to hell, man. 
I mean, it's a beautiful day out here. If you stayed out in the sun too long, you'd get burnt, you know? But guess what? In hell, it's just constant sorrow, man. I've seen it. I've seen hell with my own eyes. I've seen hell with my own eyes because God was trying to wake me up from my own stupidity, from my sin, from the, from the things that I was doing. And that's what he's trying to do to you folks. He's trying to wake you up. He's trying to get you to realize that there's a punishment for that sin coming. And you have to obey. You have to be obedient to the Word of God. You have to be obedient to it. Jesus said in John 8, 51, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Whosoever shall keep it my sake shall never see death. They'll never see death. Because they've been saved by Jesus. They've been born again. They've got the Holy Spirit. They're indulging in the Bible. They're indulging in the Word of God. They're talking to God through prayer. Praying without ceasing. You know what that means? It just makes a talk. Prayer is not some complicated thing. We make it complicated. We make everything with God complicated. But God has made it easy. So the prophet Isaiah, speaking on behalf of Jehovah, he says, Come, let us reason, saith the Lord. Come, let us reason. So Jesus wants you to come to the prayer closet and just tell him the truth. Oh, Father, I can't. Lord, help me. I, I can't turn away from homosexuality. I, I can't stop having sex outside marriage. I love the ladies too much, God. I like to smoke cigarettes, I like to vape, I like to drink, whatever it is. Whatever that sin is, folks. Your conscience bears witness to the reality of God and sin. And if your conscience is eating at you because you know something is not right, like you smoking that vape, man, I love you. God can set you free from that. Because it's bondage, folks. It's bondage. I've been there. I know. I used to smoke cigarettes. I used to vape. I used to do all kinds of things. There ain't much that I haven't been addicted to. But the blood of Jesus set me free, hallelujah. And you know what? All my life, I went in and out of churches. I, I would hear that song, there's power in the name of Jesus. But it didn't mean much to me. It was just, I would sit there and go through the motions. Oh, that's a good song. I check it off the box. I went to church. Now I'm not going to go to hell, right? Wrong. you got to obey God. Jesus said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And when you know, this is the truth. You see, the Word of God tells us that in the latter times, they will not be able to endure sound doctrine. People won't be able to endure sound doctrine. And that means doctrine that's not watered down. You know, we've got a church on every corner in America just about it. But things keep getting darker and darker because these churches have, a lot of them, not all of them, good ones, but a lot of them have turned away from the truth, folks. They turned away from the truth and they don't, they don't even abide in the Word. They don't even tell the truth about the Word. They exclude things to your damnation, to my damnation. Because I used to sit under pastors that would tell me lies, that wouldn't tell me the truth about the Word of God. And I'd walk out of there, maybe my brothers can attest to this, I'd walk out of church and I'd get drunk, I'd get high, I was still having sex outside marriage, I had no opinion about abortion, homosexuality, any of that stuff. And I thought that I was good. I thought that I was good. See, we deceive ourselves in self-righteousness, but through Jesus Christ, He will deliver you from that. Hallelujah. He will deliver you from that. See, the Bible tells us that them being ignorant of God's righteousness, seeking to establish their own righteousness, and I can guarantee you, me and my brothers, everyone will attest to, that we had a form of righteousness in our own eyes. Because that's what pride does. God blinds us to our true nature. But he goes on to say the last thing. Having not submitted himself to the righteousness of God. And that righteousness of God will lead you to Jesus Christ. And folks, I'm telling you right now, it's the best thing you've ever partaken in. If you're walking across this road today, guess what? You are exercising faith. The Bible tells us that God has instilled a measure of faith in every man and woman. Every person out here has been given a drop of faith from God. And you're exercising it right now in these people in these cars, not to break the law and run over you, God forbid. You're exercising faith in these wonderful people working this intersection and directing traffic. God bless them. You're putting the faith in this. You're putting faith in the clubs to beat the, beat the Tigers. But folks, you've got to exercise faith in God because that's the only thing that will save you. That's the only thing that when, you're, when you die and you come out of this flesh and you stand in God before judgment and the Bible tells us that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, He's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, folks. And He will, he will save you from your sins. Oh, Chicago, we want you to, you know what, I'm about to drink water. Because I'm, I'm parched, you know. I got to have hydration out here in the sun, hallelujah, to keep my vessels healthy, right? But what you really need for your soul is living water. And Jesus Christ provides that. Just like he offered that Samaritan woman at the well. He said, if you had just asked who I was, I would have given you living water. And she said, I proclaim, I, I, I perceive you to be a prophet. And he had all these words for her. He exemplified the power of God to her. And the power of God is exemplified to you today through the word of God, folks. Because the word of God is all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and righteousness. That the man of God may be thoroughly equipped and perfect for every good work. And folks, we want you to be equipped for that. Well, I want you to be equipped for that judgment day. My brother wants you to be equipped for judgment day. Because it's not God's desire that any should perish. Oh, oh don't perish, man. Don't perish. So many people go to hell, but they don't have to. A loving God. A loving God is fair and just. See, God's goodness is not to be confused with man's notions of goodness. God's goodness is a just and holy goodness. And the only way that you can meet that standard is by putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And you've got to do it today, man. The Word of God. The Bible tells us today is the day of salvation. Oh, we let the enemy trick you. Oh, we love you, sir. I want you to know Christ, man. I love all of you. I really do. I, I seriously do care about people, man. I, I used to be care about nobody. I had a selfish heart. I'm sure my brother can attest to that. I didn't care about anybody. But yeah, you would have caught me dead out here. You know what I'd have been doing? Probably getting high and watching the Cubs. And chilling with some woman. Or conning people. Or something nefarious. Something wicked. But see, when, when Christ came into my life, I was in view. I was... I was given the power of God through the Holy Spirit. And I started to realize that the less of me that there was, the more of Him that there would be. Because Jesus talked about that wine skin, you know? And see, when, you're, when you repent from your sins and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you'll be born again. Hallelujah, sir. God bless you, man. See, He gets it. Hallelujah. I knew, I knew, there, was, I knew there was more than those out here. There are people that are born again, but they're very few and far between folks. And see, the thing is, when you get born again, you're like that old wine skin. Jesus talked about that you can't make new wine and old wine skin because it'll bust. So you gotta empty it out. That's metaphorical. That's metaphorical. I know you probably heard some Chinese philosophers say that. You know, Bruce Lee used to say something about that, like if you put water in a cup, it becomes a cup. But this is not about Bruce Lee. He needed Jesus just as much as we all do. But the thing is, if you have the Holy Spirit and you really take yourself in humility to God, God will empty you out of your sin and your wickedness and your depravity. Oh, you'll be holy, holy and righteous in the name of Christ. You'll be bought and sealed because that blood that was shed on that cross at Calvary 2,000 years ago was to pay the price for your soul, for my soul, for my brother's soul, for my brothers across the street. See, my brother Salvador says, you must be born again. And then there's one that says, homosexual sin, these things, I know it's shocking to see, but it's true. It's true. Fornication is a sin. Greed is a sin. Extortion, you like to take money from people. Greed. Adultery. Effeminate. They're, they're so easy to sin against God, folks. Idolatry, you know, most people practice idolatry, don't even know it. Don't even know. Idolatry is, is having something that takes the place of God in your life. And you need to remove whatever that is. You've got to be able to examine yourself and really humble yourself and say, Lord Jesus, am I putting the clubs above you? Am I putting my job above you? My, my spouse, my friends, whatever. Because if you are, folks, you are an idolater. And you need to be delivered from that. See, 1 Corinthians 6. 10 tells us that no idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of God. You see, I'm not saying that you do put the cups above that, but some people do. I used to, uh, I used to love baseball. I mean, I still like to watch it sometimes. But it doesn't take the, the top position in my life anymore because you know what? Every day when I get up, 
I start my day, hallelujah, with that living water. I start my day with that living water, but the Bible and prayer, and I take myself before God, and I say, and I just let God put me under the microscope of holy examination, and He shows me any impurity in me, and I confess it to Him. Sometimes it's not that easy. Sometimes God has to do a few things to get you to wake up to something that you're doing. It's amazing, folks, how quickly you can stumble away from God. I mean, you can be deceived so easily, and that's why we have to stay in Christ. And I'm imploring you today to put your faith and trust in Jesus. Because it's, it's the most amazing thing that will happen to you, folks. It will change your life in ways that you can never imagine. And I want every single person out here today to have that. That's why we come out and do this. Because it's just like Jesus talked about the, the wicked servant. There's a parable. I'm not going to give you the whole thing. But one of the servants was given a talent. And he didn't do anything with it. He hid it in the ground. Because he said that, oh, Lord, I hid it because I knew you're an austere man, which means he's a hard man, right? And he was afraid. See, he let his flesh get in the way. He didn't use his talent. And God forbid that we not use ours. I'm going to lift my voice up for Jesus. For Jesus. Not for myself. Because guess what? I'm wicked without Christ. My shirt says Jesus saves from hell. Hallelujah. And He does. He saves from hell. There's so many people in hell right now, folks. It's, it's, it's impressive. Ooh, man, I'm telling you. It's an awful place, folks. Please don't end up there. Please don't end up there, folks. Nobody has to go there. That penalty has already been paid. That get out of hell card has already been punched. When Jesus said it is finished, and His Spirit ascended back to the Father, and now mankind can be forgiven of their sins, and all they have to do is repent. You have to live a life of repentance. That means you live a life away from Jesus. I mean, with Jesus. It's Jesus. I'm preaching against myself there. See that flesh trying to slip in there? See how that works? See? See, I'm, I'm fallible. I'm not perfect. I can lose my train of thought. We can do things. In fact, me and my brother just had a prayer a second ago because we were vexed by the Spirit of God to make sure that we had not sinned against God with something we just did earlier, which it wasn't. But see, that's, that's because we have a sensitive conscience because we've repented. We put our faith and trust in Jesus. We're not trusting ourselves anymore. We don't trust in the things of the world. We abide by the world. We do what we have to do and what we feel led to do by the Spirit of God. God bless you. Jesus is coming, folks. But, but we let Him lead us, you know? And the Bible tells us that there is a way that seems right to a man. You don't know that, folks? There's a way that seems right to a man and a woman. But it's Him leads to destruction. Are you headed for destruction? Are you headed for destruction today? Or are you headed for life? Oh, sin is the wages of death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. You see the verbiage there? Through Jesus Christ. When you're abiding in Him, you're, you're walking with Him. You're going the same way He went. You're doing what He says to do. And you know what that leads to? Life and freedom from sin. It leads to a life of repentance. It leads to the healing of your lands. It leads to the healing of your mind and your heart from the disease of this world known as sin. Something that we have to live with every day, folks. Oh, I love you too, young man. Such, such love and warmth from our youth today, man. I'm so hopeful about the future of America. That's what we've got to look forward to. But praise God, young man, there's hope for your filthy heart. There's hope for that dirty potty mouth. There's hope for you, man. I used to be just like you, man. I really did. But you don't have to be like that. See, he thinks he's right. That's God. He's blinded by his own selfishness. He thinks he holds the moral high ground. When in reality, he's just being played like everybody else. And you know what? I actually admire that young man because at least he's got the tenacity and zeal to express himself. I mean, he's not hurting my feelings. I love him. But that shows that he's got some zeal for life. And he can use that zeal. God can use that zeal. He can be right here in this corner with us. Anybody, anybody can be used by God. You know, maybe, maybe the, the enemy's telling you it's too late for you. And the enemy will do that. Oh, I'll get saved tomorrow. I'll get right with God next week. I'll get right with God next year. No, now. Because nobody's guaranteed tomorrow. I'm not guaranteed tomorrow. A car could jump this curve, God forbid, and take me and my brother out. Now, y'all would probably be very happy because we'd shut up. But we know where we're going. We've got an insurance policy on our soul. Stamped. 
by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because we have repented and trusted in Christ. We're not trusting in ourselves. And if we ever start to, guess what? See, God has made a new conscience in us. He's cleansed us. So whenever we do something outside of God and we need to make it right with Him, we're so sensitive to it that we immediately take care of that. We will, we will stop whatever we're doing and take care of that on the spot. Hallelujah. And that's what you need, folks. You need that cleansing. You need that transformation. The Bible tells us, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. Touch not the things of the world. Touch not homosexuality. Touch not fornication, greed, licentiousness, extortion, drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, so on and so forth, idolatry, whatever it is. And be ye separate, saith the Lord. And I will receive you. He will receive you into his presence. And you will be my sons and daughters. And I shall be your father, saith the Lord Almighty. This is a promise of God Almighty in heaven, who's your father in heaven. If you would just let him be. But you have to choose. You have to make the choice. We can't convert you. We can't make you do anything. But we're going to give you the best argument we can, led by the Holy Spirit, that Jesus Christ sets you free from sin. Sets you free from the burden of iniquity that this world owes. It's just like, yo, man, you just, oh, I'm just pulling it. i got to smoke another joint to have peace. i got to drink another beer to have peace. i got to have sex with somebody to have peace. I'm going to continue to live in this lifestyle with sexuality because it gives me peace. I'm going to continue to covet money because it gives me peace. There is security in my bank account. I got a big fat bank account. I don't need nobody's help. I don't need God. Oh, praise God for First Peter tells us. And you know how we have this revelation because Jesus saves from sin and he sets you free and you can receive the word of God. And First Peter tells us, be sure you came into this world with nothing and it's certain that you will leave with nothing. You will leave with nothing. You know what will leave this earth? Your soul. You know what the soul is? The heart. The heart is the core essence of a man's soul. And what is your heart given to? You? you know, the world will tell you, oh, follow your heart. Follow your heart. But the Word of God, the Word of the living God in heaven, the one true source of life, you know what He'll tell you? Follow Jesus. That's what His Word will tell you. Jesus said, if any man would deny, if we follow, come after Him, God bless you, man. If any man would come after me, He said, if he would but deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. And when you do that, folks, when you bear that, when you want to live a life of righteousness for the God in heaven and obey his word, you'll be set free from sin because Jesus saves from it. He saves from hell. He saves from sin. He saves from the clutch of Satan and his demons. And he saves from self. I had to be saved from myself. I had to be saved from myself. Without the Holy Spirit, without abiding in Jesus Christ every day, making that conscience effort, the first thing I do every morning, not every morning, I, but pretty much 99% of them, sometimes you can't, but I at least spend some time with God every day. At least an hour. Try to spend more with it. You know, sometimes the time just escapes you. My brother's going to attest to that. If you've got some free time, I mean, you can just start reading scripture and talking to God, and His presence comes in, and it's like, man, I mean, time will just get away from you. The Bible says that the peace of God, which is beyond comprehension, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. There's that word again, through, see, by abiding in Him. And when you have that peace of God, it comes in the absence of sin. Oh, because Jesus Christ will save you from sin. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the key to unlocking eternal life. And that's the only way, folks. I don't mean, my brother's out of it. We have to repent from those things. Pornography, fornication, homosexuality, Greed, like that. I mean, there's all kinds of things, man. We're not picking on any specific sins. I mean, some people always say that, but that's not the case. But folks, it's so easy to sin against God. It's so easy to do it. And you have to have, you need Jesus in your life in order to lead a, lead a life pleasing to God that will set you free from death, for the, for the penalty of death and hell. And we're imploring you today 
and set your sights away from the things of this world. And hit your knees. And cry out to God for mercy. Exercise Romans 10, 13. And say, because it says, For whosoever shall cry out to the Lord shall be saved. And if you cry out to Jesus, to make your decision with the Father, and you'll be saved. And guess what? Your sins will be blotted out because you're saved from sin through Jesus. You repented. And it says, Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out and you find refreshing in the presence of the Lord. And we want you to have that refreshing for your soul. Hallelujah. So think about it, Chicago. You want to cross the sidewalk today. You want to go to the game, whatever you're doing. Think about your eternity, folks, because one of these days your spirit's going to come out of that flesh. And you're going to be judged by a holy God. Oh, we want you to be on the right side of that judgment. Oh, the wrath of God abides upon the sons of the disobedience. Don't be disobedient to God. Don't shake your head to it. Don't laugh at it. Hallelujah, sir. God bless you. We just want you to have a better life, folks, through Christ. We want you to, to be in eternity with God. So give your life to Jesus today. Repent and believe the gospel. Hallelujah. you about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He came in the world to set the captive free, man. That's what he came to do. He came to set the captive free. The Lord whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. You don't want to be free from your sin? That's what he came to free us up from. Sin and death. The Bible says the way of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. That's a gift of God. Eternal life. Yeah, that's your, nobody. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. He did not come in the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. Amen. Saved from sin. Saved from death. You don't want to be saved, man. You can be saved from your sin today, folks. Uh, you got about 20 seconds to cross the street, 30 seconds. We're going to give you the gospel. Uh, the Bible says that all those who have the Son have life, but those who do not have the Son do not have life. And the wrath of God abides upon you. Is the wrath of God upon you today? Is the wrath of God on you? Or do you have Jesus Christ as your Savior? Have you turned to the living God? Have you walked from darkness to light? Believing Christ, being saved from sin. Uh, one day sin will be cast into a lake of fire. And all those things that are not found written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Sin, it says that death and hell, the wages of sin is death. Death and hell are going to go into the lake of fire. That's where death and hell are going to go. That's the trash. That's God's trash. Death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. And all those names that are not found written in the Lamb's Book of Life will be cast into the lake of fire. So you can be free from sin, folks. Today could be your special Cubs Day game where you're free from sin. You'll remember this day forever. You turn and repent. Believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. You'll never forget this day. You'll be like, yeah, man, I was at the Tiger and Cubs game. And I heard some preachers sharing the gospel. They were telling me about hell. They were telling us about sin. They were telling us about all the sins, the murder in the heart, adultery, fornication. They were telling us all these things. And I heard them. And I started to believe what they were saying. I thought they were all Republican. I thought they were here for the Democratic National Convention because they were Republican. Oh, then I came to realize they were Christians. They're followers of Christ. Not followers of Trump. They're followers of Christ. Not followers of the Democratic Party. They're followers of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. He's the one who came to set us free, folks. 
Have you been delivered from your sin? You can be delivered today. Stop walking in the, the broad way. The broad way goes to destruction, folks. And there's going to be many that go on the broad way. But he said, narrow is the path that leads to life. And he said, few there will be that find it. Broad is the way for destruction, man. That's where most of the world is headed right now, to destruction. You know, there's a way in the Bible that says there's a, seat, there's a way that seems right to man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The ways of death. That's the same thing that happened in the Garden of Eden, man. Happened in the Garden of Eden when God commanded Adam not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What happened? God said, in the day you eat of it, you will surely die. And then serpent came and said to the woman, he said, you won't surely die. Did God really say that? He told the serpent, he the, the serpent told the woman, you won't surely die. That God knows in the day you eat thereof, your eyes will be open and you shall be as gods, knowing both good and evil. Amen. That's what he told her. But he tricked her. He's a deceiver. He's the same deceiver today that's in this world today, deceiving the world, tricking the world. He's the father of lies. The others who want to turn to the father of lights, that's where every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the front of lights. Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came down from above, the Father of lights. Amen. The Holy Ghost was sent from above, the Father of lights, the perfect gift, the gift of salvation. Uh, but I think most of the world loves sin. Most of the world loves their dark heart. There's sin in their heart. They love sinning because it's fun, right? The Word of God says sin is pleasurable for a season, for a time. It's fun. It's fun when you go and you travel and you go and sin. But then one day your sin is going to catch up with you, man. You're going to be alone at night and that sin is going to weight you down. You're going to feel guilty for what you did. Uh, you know, when that happens, I'm not going to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I know it will happen. Because it happened to me. It happened to my brothers. It happened to all of us. say to believe in self and follow your heart. The Bible says to believe in Jesus Christ and follow him. Follow the God of the Bible. Believe the Bible and nothing but the Bible. If what you believe does not line up with the word of God, it's fallacy. It's not the truth. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by Him. The only way that you're going to make it into heaven is through Jesus Christ. But your sin is what separates you from God. Your sin is what separated you from God's blessing upon your life, from God's mercy upon your life and His grace. God's still giving you mercy and grace day after day. But for you to experience 
and walk in newness of life and take that grace and have freedom from sin is a different story. That only comes after you're born again. How shall ye be born again, people? How shall ye escape the damnations of hell if you're not willing to get right with God? If you're not willing to turn away from your sin? Time for you people to humble yourself before God. Time for you to get down on your knees, 18 inches to the ground, and cry out to God before it's too late. Does it matter if it's at a construction site? Does it matter if it's at the bathroom of a bar? Or been right where you stand? Today is the day that you get right with God if you're willing to repent. Today is the day that you can turn away from your sin and turn away from the wicked life that you've been living. You're not happy in your sin. You are depressed in your sin. You are miserable with the life that you're living. No matter how much money you have, no matter how successful you are, no matter how many things that you like to do and say, you are not happy. You're bored, you're depressed, you wish you could be doing something better than come to this stupid game. God wants to save you from yourself. Do not commit suicide, people. There is still an answer and a number that you can call. That's Jesus Christ. Get on your knees and cry out to God before it's too late, people. God sees your misery. God sees that you're unhappy. God sees you cry yourself to sleep at night, wishing that things could be better, wishing things wouldn't get worse, wishing that there would be an escape from the situation that you're in. But God has a better plan for you. What the devil meant for evil, the Lord meant for good. If you get right with God one day and you turn away from your sin, you'll be in a better position than somebody who didn't go through it. God's trying to get your attention, people. God's trying to get your attention. God's trying to wake you up. Your sin has found you out. God sees your sin. God sees your porn. God sees your secrets and your lies. Don't try and hide from a holy God. God sees that you cheated on your girlfriend. God sees that you're lying to your parents. God sees that you're a different person wherever you go. But you have to put on a facade for every person that you meet. You have to say a different thing just to please everybody. God sees it all. God sees your sin. Don't try and hide from the Holy God. Don't try and hide your sin. Public you will never be able to hide away from God. Don't record me, bro. Don't record me, bro. Don't Jesus Christ wants to love you, people. Get on, bro. Don't fuck with me, Jesus Christ. I will get you arrested right now. I want you to turn away from your sin. I will get you arrested right now. Jesus Christ. That's assault. God on the cross for that three days. That's assault. He rose again. God wants to be so loving and righteous to you people. He wants to be so gracious. But don't reject God in your sin, people. Don't reject a holy God. Because you'll regret it one day. If you end up in hellfire, you're going to regret the day that you rejected God. The day that you rejected His holy word. If you reject God in your sin, you're going to wind up in hellfire. You're going to weep and wail and gnash your teeth. Hellfire awaits the sinner. Warning! Warning! Hellfire awaits you if you don't repent. Warning! Warning! You're headed for hellfire. That's where you're headed. That's where you're going to go. If you reject Jesus Christ, people, God is commanding every man everywhere to repent. God has you surrounded. God has his whole place surrounded. Time for you people to come out with their hands up and get on your knees and cry out to God. God is always going to win and you're always going to lose when it comes to the fight that you try to fight with God. It's a foolish thing to try and fight God. It's a foolish thing to think that you can win against God, that you can try and outsmart the God of the Bible. Just because you do the same amount of good works as you do bad or a little more, does not mean anything to God. God's giving you a clear path to forgiveness. God's giving you a clear path to righteousness in a new life. You people want to do it your own way. Time for you to people to read the Bible, believe the Bible, obey 
the Bible. Obey the Word of God. Live your life by this Bible and you never regret the day that you did it. Live your life by what God tells you and nobody else and you'll never regret the day that you did so. Time for you people to listen to godly counsel, to listen to the Word of God and God's people and what God has to say to you. God's going to work on your heart one way or another, but how shall you hear without a preacher? So-called Christian, what are you doing here today? So-called Christian, what are you doing here today? You like to have a smug face, a prideful heart, wear that cross around your neck, or have something about Jesus Christ tattooed on your body, but you won't stand up. You won't stand up for Jesus Christ. You won't defend Jesus Christ. You'll defend your wicked friends all the way to the grave, but you won't do a single thing to defend the person who died for you. You won't do a single thing to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Shame on you. Shame on you. You are not a good parent if you bring your kids out here. You are an awful father. You are a horrible mother if you bring your kids out here today. Shame on you. You're letting your kids see all these cuss words. You're surrounding them with all the alcohol, with all the drugs, and with all this hatred. You have done a terrible job as a parent. And you older people, your parents should be ashamed of you. Your parents should be ashamed of the person that you've become. Having a beer in your hand, puffing that cigarette and that smoke, you should be ashamed of the person that you are. You are wicked, you are wretched, you deserve to go to hell. Time for you people to get right with God. Time for you people to turn away from your sin. You can try and laugh it off, but God's going to have the last laugh. God is not mocked. Whatsoever men soweth, that shall you will also reap. Bad mom, bad dad, we're bringing your kids out here. Bad mom, bad dad, we're watching and letting your kids watch you get drunk and get all turked up and violent towards a stupid team. Shame on you. If you walk in there and call yourself a Christian, shame on you. If you support this garbage, shame on you. Repent or perish. Turn or burn. God sees your sin. Little kids, stop obeying your parents in this sort of way. Stop supporting this garbage. And you parents, how can you teach your children this wicked lifestyle? This is all that you teach your kids to come to the stupid ball game. Is this all that you teach your kids? Is this all that they're worth for? You people are worshiping a bunch of animals. You people are acting like a bunch of animals. Tigers and cubs. You people need to get right with God. How can you worship this garbage? You've just been passing around a ball for three hours. Somehow you get worked up and spend all your money and get so excited for this stupid game. You felt so passionate because your sports player, your sports team said something that you liked. These people don't care about you. They just want your money. These people don't care about you. They just want your attendance. You people are worshiping the devil. Yeah, just leave it alone. Right. Time for you people to get right with God. Right. 
Oh, they're your favorite now. They're, they're lifting up the bar card. You think about the couch, you know all the players, you know the stats. Oh, man, you shout and scream, but you don't even know how many, how many disciples Jesus has. You don't even know how many books are in the Bible. You don't know the stats about God. How many names does God have? <laughs> oh, man, how about you? When you know more about God, know about your, about your Cubs, about your baseball game, there's idols and idol kill. You love them, you worship them, you adore them, you think about them, you talk about them. Oh, you're excited when they win, but you're not excited about Jesus. Most of you hate God. You hate God because He won't let you do what you want to do. You hate God because you love the praise of men rather than the praise of God. You love the praise of men more than the praise of God. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, you think more about what others think of you than what God thinks of you. you you're more concerned about what your neighbor, the guy next to you, what he thinks of you. Oh, they'll praise you and thank you together because you've got the cup shirt on. Oh, you're with them. You guys are yoked together because you believe that the Cubs are going to win. But you have no, no love for Christ. No, no, no worship for Him who has created you. No thanks. No, oh, this is the Thanksgiving. You want to know the will of God to give thanks? You want me to read that to you? It's right here. Everything I know is right here. Everything I know is right here, man. It's, it's not in the program of the Cubs, man. <laughs> it's right here, man. It's right here. You can know. Did you know that? You can know God. Right here on the Bible. You can read the Bible. You, you can know God by the Bible. Are you even concerned about that? See, if you don't care about it now, you're not going to care about it then. You're not going to care about it on then. Oh, I want you I want you to understand. I want you to understand that this is the will of God to give thanks. Oh, I thank him. I thank him. I love him. I praise him. I want you all to experience it. Uh, I'll get Gabe. It's probably good to this. Gabe. Gabe, you want to preach? Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Praise God. And I was in and out of church most of my life. And I used to say praise God and it didn't mean much to me. But it means something now. You know why? Because I got the Holy Spirit. Because I actually have communion with God through Son Jesus Christ. Through the Holy Spirit, man. I've been so born again. Hallelujah. I've been born again, just like my son says, Jesus saves from hell, he saves me from hell. He can save everybody on this farm, everybody in this game, everybody on these streets, everybody in this city, everybody in this world is glory to God. Glory to God, hallelujah, Jesus Christ is King, amen. Glory to God, Jesus Christ is going to come back as a judge. He's going to judge everyone in righteousness, the righteousness of God. None of us is righteous, we have no righteousness. We all have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Jesus Christ. He's the only one that never sinned. That's why we need Jesus Christ. Uh, he's a friend that's closer than a brother in times of adversity. Jesus Christ loves you. God loves you, but it's not that we love God, but that God loved us first. For yet while we were sinners, Christ died for you and me. And it's a payment. Uh, you know, when you, have a, when you charge up a credit card, you have a debt. That's how sin is. Sin is like a debt. You're charging. When you sin, you store up debt. You're breaking God's law. You're not following the will of God. God is a judge. He's holy. He's going to judge all of us in righteousness. His standard, it's going to be God's standard, not our standard. 
Oh, you're going to see I'm a poor holy God at the end of this life. I'm going to tell you 10 out of 10 people die. 10 out of 10 people die. You have an appointment with the holy God. You will stand before God, Jehovah God, as a judge. If you do not have Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, you still have the wrath of God upon you. You are still condemned. Oh, I'm telling you. Knowing the terror of the Lord, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. We persuade men. You see, God gave you a conscience to know to know when you do right and wrong, you know? And uh, I used to be in the world like you, but praise God, by His grace, His mercy, I'm no longer in the world. Glory to God. You see, Jesus Christ calls us out of the world, for we are not of the world. Jesus Christ wants you to know how much He loves you guys today. We come out here not to condemn you. Jesus Christ did not come to condemn. He came to save. What did He save us from? What does Jesus Christ save us from? He saves us from the wrath of God, the judgment of God. See, when you lie... You've broken God's law not to bear false witness. Uh, if you break the law here in Chicago, Chicago has a lot of laws. Uh, if you are caught uh, drinking and driving, or you're caught having sex with an underage minor, uh, or you stole something in a department store, and you are a law breaker, a transgressor of the law. And that's how sin is. Sin is breaking God's law, His holy commandments. And then God gives us holy commandments, holy laws. He gave it uh, to Moses at Sinai. You know, God, by the finger of God, God gave Moses the law. It's not just ten commandments, folks. It's not just ten commandments. Uh, God actually gave 613 commandments. Can you imagine that? To Israel. To Israel. As a salvation is of the Jews. Amen. God, Jesus Christ, came down for the house of Israel first. First, but not just for them. He came. He, Jesus Christ, died for all humanity. For once you come into Christ Jesus, you are no longer a Jew or a Gentile. We are all one in Christ Jesus. Uh, Galatians 3:28 uh, says, "You're either neither male nor female, slave nor free, Jew nor Greek, but we are all one in Christ Jesus." Amen. Now, this does not mean that you can be a transgender. You need a transition to a saint of God. No longer a sinner, condemned under the wrath of God. No, no, no longer with a, a, a vessel of God's wrath that He has mercy upon you. The uh, mercy of God, amen. God, we don't deserve the mercy of God, the grace of God. Grace, it's by grace you're saved. It is the gift of God, so no man can boast. God bless you. God bless you with repentance. Uh, you know, I love you. I, I love you, sir. You're getting older, sir. Uh, you know, every 1.3 seconds, another soul dies on this planet. Every day... On this world, over 180,000 people, they breathe their last breath, their heart beats its last beat, and their soul goes to one of two places. One of two places. I'm talking about the second death, the judgment of God. You can be absent from the body, is present with the Lord. When you belong to Jesus, when you repent of your sins and believe the gospel. Jesus Christ preached repentance. John the Baptist preached repentance. All the prophets preach repentance, and real Christians preach repentance because God commands His people to preach the kingdom of God. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Gospel means good news, people. We're here to let you know it's good news, that you're no longer in Christ Jesus, a slave to sin, but you become a servant of righteousness. A servant of righteousness for Jesus Christ. He took sin on Himself. He who knows no sin, He came sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. You can you can have the confidence on that day when you end your life, when you come to Jesus Christ, at the end of your life, you can have the confidence that you will not be ashamed. You know, sin is shameful. It is shameful. Sin is shameful. You know what you do when, when you think no one is looking? When you look, no one is looking. You think no one is looking. You know that you can, sin, you're going to die one day, sir. I'm going to tell you, you're going to die one day. You're going to stand before a holy God. I came to give you the good news that you don't have to wonder if you're going to be in heaven. You can know for sure you're going to be in heaven. You can have the guarantee that God is not a man that he should buy. God is not a man that he should change his mind. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was given as an, a, an offering, a sacrifice, a payment, a ransom, and a home. He is a Savior. He is a Deliverer. He is a great physician. He is the Prince of Peace. He is God in the flesh. Jesus Christ is the perfect, perfect image of God the Father, full of grace and truth. The law was given to Moses, but grace and truth were given through Jesus Christ. Sin entered the world through Adam, but grace all the more through Jesus Christ.
So don't reject the, the message. The reason if you don't like the gospel is because right now you are a slave to sin. But the good news is that if you but humble yourself, sir, if you but humble yourself, madam, then God will respond and grant you forgiveness for sin. I'm here to tell you forgiveness is wonderful. The weight of sin, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of eternal life is through Christ Jesus our Lord. You can be redeemed, you can be reconciled before a holy God, you, have, you can have that, that washing of the blood, the washing of the blood, hallelujah, of God. Amen. You have to be washed by the blood of Jesus. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. The Holy Spirit is a witness, amen. The Holy Spirit is a witness, amen. Now, what is your testimony going to be? You know, when you go to, when you go before court, a man judge, when you go before court, a, a man judge, there's evidence that you break the law of man. What about you, gentlemen? Have you chosen Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today? Do you live for Him? Is He your first love? Do you seek to do the will of God? The Word of God, and James says, do not be a, a hearer of the Word, only be a doer of the Word. See, if you're a hearer only, the Bible says you are unstable in all your ways. You're double-minded. You're double-minded because you are actually serving your own belly out of unbelief. You're not serving the living God. You're serving yourself. See, the devil does not care if you worship him. He just wants to make sure you don't worship God. That's what Satan means in Hebrew, Hasatan. He is the, the opposer of God and God's people. Until you become a child of God, until you become a child of God, you are a child of the devil. How are you doing? If you wouldn't mind, oh, I'm sorry. If you wouldn't mind uh, anything on that side, so anywhere across the street. I appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. So, you know, th there's coming a day. You have an appointment with the Holy God, for it's appointed a man to die once, and then comes the judgment of God. You will not escape the wrath to come. Who has who has warned you of the wrath to come? Amen. You will not outrun God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, by His divine providence, brought me back here on this public sidewalk. Glory to God to preach the everlasting gospel of repentance to you. That you would have... See, I came thousands of miles. I came about 13, not 1,500 miles to give you the gospel. I could come out of my business. I have my own business. Amen. But, you know, I'm here about God's business. Amen. It's all about the glory of God that I'm still alive. And I have, uh, I have no... I don't deserve to even say the name of Jesus. You know... Uh, John the Baptist said that I baptize you with water, the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin, but there comes one greater than me after me because he is preferred, he is before me. And he, I am not worthy to untie the latchet of his sandals. This was John the Baptist. Jesus Christ said of John the Baptist after John the Baptist died for God. He had his head taken off. Are you willing to have your head taken off for Jesus Christ? See, Jesus John the Baptist was born with the Holy Spirit. He had the Spirit from the time he was in his mother's womb. And uh, because his mother Elizabeth presented herself, she knew Mary, the, Mary, the mother of Jesus, the earthly, the son of man. See, God, Jesus is fully man and fully God. God needs no mother. We don't worship Mary. Here in Chicago, we have a lot of Catholics. And I grew up Catholic. You know, the Catholics, they have a little bit of truth, but they worship a dead God. They worship a Jesus that's a statue of Mary. You don't pray to Mary. Mary was a sinner. Mary needed a Savior. She called Jesus Christ her Lord. Amen. Mary would rebuke you to your face, Catholics. Mary would cry out. She would rebuke you to your face. She would rebuke you a lot. She would be a lot. She would rebuke you to your face. If Mary you were sure with pagan gods, they came out of the Roman culture. The Romans worshipped devils. For we will call Greek mythology. It's actually Satan. I mean, Satan, he can, he's an angel of light. He can change his appearance. He can appear like a priest in a, in a church with, a, with an abbot. And, you know, a lot of these Catholic priests molest children because they are not of God. They are of the devil. Pedophilia. I'm not going to listen to a pedophile. Don't follow Catholic priests. Don't follow the Pope. The Pope's a pervert. Catholic's uh, post. There was a woman, a very loose woman, that was dressed up pretty much naked, actually liked that picture. This is the man that calls him himself Father. The Pope thinks he's a representative of God. He is not. He is a child of Satan. And all those who worship devils are not of God, but they are of Satan. The world, this world is perishing. Jesus Christ said that he goes to depart. God bless you. How you doing, brother? Good, how are you? God, my hands are kind of tied. What's up? Oh, no. Uh, my man just said, if you just, if you just right here, if I can adios.
Well, Steve, let me tell you something about my man. You believe in Jesus Christ? Yes, sir, I do. Yeah. Okay. Child of God, always. So you're born again? Yes, sir, yes. What's your testimony? Can you understand a short version of it? What's your testimony? You know, uh, live life, love people. That's kind of testimony. You know what it means to be born again? Okay. What's born again? Born again. So Jesus and the Gospel of John chapter 3 talked to uh, Nicodemus. Nicodemus, he was high up in the Jewish religious establishment that I called the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin, which still exists today in modern Israel, is made up of 70 elders. It, it, it's, uh, if I could compare it, it's like the U.S. Supreme Court Congress uh, uh, in this country. Like well, it is a form of baptism. It's not water baptism alone. It's baptism by the Holy Spirit. That's a change. So just to get water baptized means he just got wet. It means he came in a sinner, he came out a sinner. Uh, you know, you would have you would have done better to take a bar of soap with you, take at least a bath. You know, but, but we, I was baptized three times. I was, ba yeah, I was baptized as a baby, as a Catholic. I don't remember it. Babies are not vipers and diapers. God does not throw babies in hell. So babies aren't even aware of sin, right? I mean, God's not going to throw babies in hell. But once you come to the knowledge of the truth of sin, you know, we're a sinner. You know, the age of knowledge of majority of accountability. You know, how old were you when you knew that what you're doing is wrong? I can tell you, I was very young. I was about four. Oh, what? Yeah. I knew I was doing some some dirty stuff as a four year old. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was the stuff. You know what I mean? Five a couple times. There you go. I read the whole thing a couple times. Yeah. Hey, you have a safe. Me too. I'm gonna move on. All right. God bless you. I'm gonna move on. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So people who come here, we're not coming out here to condemn you. We're not coming out here to condemn you because my Lord didn't come to condemn. He came to save, amen. The arm of the Lord is not too short that it cannot save, amen. You're not too far gone from Jesus Christ that, that, that Jesus can't save you, amen, from your sin, amen. God is mighty. He is almighty God. Jesus Christ is almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. All creation declares the glory of the Lord, amen. God made you fearfully and wonderfully in your mother's womb. He fashioned you. He said this to prophet Jeremiah, but this is the word of God for all of us. For Jesus said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word breathed out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is that word of God. He is the eternal word of God. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall endure forever, forever, forever. Let me ask you a question, people. Uh, where will you spend eternity? Do you know? Do you know where you're going to spend eternity? Where, 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 are you going to be in heaven or hell? All right. Give me a thumbs up if you think you're going to be in heaven. Praise God. Who thinks they're going to be in hell? All right. All right. Praise God. But you know what? A lot of us think we're pretty good people. But Jesus, they called him good, and he said, Why do you call me good? There is only one good, my Father. See, none of us is good according to God. That's why Jesus Christ had to die for you and me. That we, that we would have right standing with God. We who believe. Amen. Jesus Christ said, this is, the, this is the work that you believe on the one that was sent by God the Father. Jesus Christ came down from heaven. He was sent by God the Father to reconcile us to that beautiful, perfect world that he so loved. As uh, John 3.16 says, you know, I'm here in Chicago, I come from Taos, which is the Bible Belt, but there's a lot of hypocrites in the Bible Belt, mostly Southern Baptists, because they believe a devil's doctrine of once saved, always saved. They believe that they can continue on sinning because they said a sinner's prayer. Uh, I'm here to tell you folks, that's not going to save you on the day, that's not going to save you on that day. I'm here to tell you folks, it's not going to save you. Amen. Only Jesus Christ saves. Jesus Christ is mighty to save. Hallelujah. Oh, the grace of God, the mercy of God, hallelujah. But he, uh, we don't deserve it. You know what grace means? Grace means unmerited favor. Have you ever have you ever received something you don't deserve in your life? Have you ever received something you don't deserve? Oh, uh, yeah. Eternal things. I'm talking about here. I mean, we're getting older, right? I'm, I'm first to 52 this year. Uh, in about two months, I'm turning 52. Some of you guys are my age, a little bit older. Amen. Uh, you know, this world is getting darker, isn't it? Isn't it getting darker? Yeah, but you know what? There's a lot of children that they don't know if they're boys or girls. I mean, that wasn't going on in our generation. Not, you know what I mean? Like, homosexuality was shameful. We're not, now we're celebrating it. Now it's everywhere. You know? And God, he, he gives us laws for a reason, for our own good. You know, you guys have kids. You, you told them to do or not do things for their own good because you love them. That's the same thing with God. He loves us because he's our Heavenly Father. You know, but if we're rebellious, if we are disobedient children, then there's a consequence. What's that? 
My church is a 24-7 church. It's the invisible church. It's the kingdom of heaven. God is coming back for a people, amen, not a building. So that's the church. It's the church of God, of Jesus Christ, amen. All born-again Christians. I can only fellowship with those who are called the saints of God. I used to be a sinner full of sins, millions of sins, actually. And Jesus Christ had mercy on me. I hated that name for most of my life. I hated Christians for most of my life. Because I was confused because the devil got in my head when I was a little kid. And he spoke a lie. And I believed the lie. Amen. But by the grace of God, I'm still here. He picked, he picked me so that I was the least likely in my family, I tell you, to be doing this. Amen. So he chose me to demonstrate his grace, his mercy, his power. Amen. So I just preach Christ and him crucified. So it's him speaking through me, not me. I don't know how to preach. I don't know how to pray for people. But he does. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. So and we are the church coming back for a people, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. Amen. And we will become the glory of God the Father, amen, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one, amen. They bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit, they bear record in heaven. And they agree, amen. Uh, they agree that the Spirit, amen, the water and the blood, they agree as one, as one, because God is one, amen. God is one, glory to God. And we can be one with God. Through the Son. Jesus Christ said he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, he is the way. There is no other way to heaven, to the Father. There is no other truth. Jesus Christ is the very definition of truth. There is no other life. Life. Jesus Christ came to give life and life more abundantly. He is the God of the living, not the dead. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. The God of Abraham. It's very loud in that ball game. If your ears are sensitive, you might want to not want to go to this ball game. It's very loud in there. You know, but I give you the everlasting words of God, the eternal words of God, you know, that you would come to the knowledge of the truth. Do not, do not love the lie. Do not prefer the lie. Amen. Do not prefer the lie. Amen. See, those who love a lie, they're going to be burning in the lake of fire. God wants to mention it's an eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ said, not everyone who calls him Lord will enter in the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of my Father in heaven. Amen. Jesus Christ said on that day, many will say, Lord, Lord, did we not cast out devils in your name? And did we not do many wonderful works? And he will say, he will declare to them, depart from me, for I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. I want to focus on that word, workers of iniquity. Workers of iniquity are those who do sin and they do not fear God. You know, I used to be, God bless you. You got that right. It's not natural. It's not natural. God made us perfect. Babies are not born with sexual desire. You know, they're not. Babies are not born gay or straight. You know, they come to a certain age, you know, and, and we can't be accepting people that are going to burn in hell. That's not very loving. It's not very friendly. Even though if I heard the truth hurts, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? God does not make any mistakes. You are not a mistake. No, but sin is in this world. It's not a perfect world, people. I'm here to tell you that God is going to bring the perfect world here. But before he does that, he is going to destroy this imperfect world that is full of sin, full of iniquity, because God will not abide with sin. He is holy. He is holy, holy, holy. And he commands his people to be holy. The I am commands his people to be holy. But man, with man alone, this is not possible. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. It's by the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit in you. If you would but believe, because we are saved by grace, it's the gift of God through faith, not of any works that no man can boast. Oh, praise God for his wonderful grace and mercy, his patience, his loving kindness towards us, the Father of all life, amen. He is wonderful. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth, he gave his life. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only Son, amen, amen, that as many as believe should not perish but have everlasting eternal life in heaven, amen. Do you believe? Well, what kind of faith do you have? Because even the devils believe in Jesus Christ, but they're not going to be in heaven. The devil is judged. He knows his time is up. Satan is the father of all lies. Satan is a murderer, and he has been from the beginning. When the devil speaks, it's out of his own character. Nothing but lies, lies, lies. The LGBTQ lies, the Republican lies, the Democratic lies. This nation celebrates lies. If you turn on the TV, they're lying to you. They're selling you things that they can't deliver on. They're promising you you. They're promising you lose the weight. They're promising you'll have the hot wife. They're promising you'll make tons of money. They're promising your best life now. And you're going to hell, hell, hell. Because they can't deliver. But God, He delivered. 
God delivered. He gave us a woman to God's stuff. Jesus Christ died a horrible death on a cross. He willingly laid down his life for you and me. He took the whips. He took the beatings of Gordon G. They spat him in face. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They paraded him around. They put a, a, a red cloak on a red horse. And they made him carry his own cross. Curses everyone who hangs on a tree. Amen. He willingly laid down his life for you and me. But what are we going to do with such great a message of salvation? What are we going to do with that wonderful message of salvation? There's nothing we can do to enter heaven. We can't deserve it. All the money in the world will not get you to heaven. You need Jesus Christ, the saving faith. It is by faith you are saved. It's a gift of God. God gives grace to the humble, but he is opposed to the prideful. Any pride, any pride, God hates it. Pride is sin. Pride is what caused the devil to be cast out of heaven. See, the devil was a mighty angel. He was a worshiper of God. He was a mighty cherubim, but he wanted to be worshipped by God, and that's why he was cast out of heaven. That's why God cast Lucifer, the morning star, out of heaven. Amen. He is a counterfeit. The devil is a liar. Kick that devil out of your life today. Choose Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. See, until you become a born again a child of God, until you have repented of your sins, believe the gospel, until you've been baptized by the Holy Spirit of God, then you are still a child of disobedience. You don't have the ability to comprehend the things of God. You don't know the word of God is locked away from you. But Jesus has the key to open that book, the book of understanding, so that your mind will be open, that the scales will be removed from your eyes, that you would see the truth, hallelujah, if you come to the knowledge of the truth, that truth shall set you free, glory to God. Jesus Christ is coming back to church in righteousness, in flames of fire, and if you are not in Christ, then you will be cast into hell fire forever. I'm talking about your precious soul. You are not, your body is not your own, but it is a bought out of Christ. The price was the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. He willingly laid on his life. He completely died. He took the suffering of death. He took sin on himself. He drank of the wrath of God. He took that wrath of God on himself that he knew that you would believe he died. He very much died for three days and rose again on the third day to demonstrate the power of God, that you would have resurrection power of God in you, that your life might be hid in Christ. As many as believe on him are no longer condemned. The condemnation of God, come out of that condemnation. Wherefore, God says, come out from amongst her and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I, and I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters. Oh, it's wonderful, people. I'm here to tell you there's nothing better to than to know your father, your heavenly father. Amen. Your father is calling you home. Prodigals, your father is calling you home. Prodigals, I'm here to tell you the sex is not worth it. The beer is not worth it. The marijuana is not worth it. The pornography is not worth it. The money is not worth it. The party is not worth it. The idol worship is not worth it. Turn to Jesus Christ before you burn in hell. Jesus Christ said, unless you repent, you shall likewise perish. God doesn't want you to perish in hell forever. God wants you to be saved from the death of God. God bless you. God wants you to be saved from his judgment. God is going to come to the flames of fire. He's going to be a terror for those who do not receive him. You have today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. I'm going to tell you many people die today. As I, as I have preached, as I have walked around this park, um, hundreds, thousands of people had already died. While you're watching the Cubs game, someone is breathing. Thousands of people are breathing their last breath. Thousands of people, their hearts stop beating. They are dead. The life here is over. And if they do not receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, it's too late for them. It's too late for them. But you have an opportunity. You have a chance to receive the gospel. You have an opportunity today. You can humble yourself before the mighty hand of God that he might lift you up. You can humble yourself before the mighty hand of Jehovah God before he slays you. His angels will slay you if you are not his. He hates the wicked. God hates and he loves. 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 Turn to Christ. Turn to Jesus Christ. Turn to Jesus Christ, sir. Turn to Jesus Christ, sir. Turn to Jesus Christ, sir. He's going to destroy you unless you give your life to Jesus Christ. So I don't want you to go to hell. I want you to receive Jesus Christ. You're going to say it. Why will you not hear? Why will you not hear the message? 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 I'm just going to take this off here. He just assaulted me. He just assaulted me. He's on video. I like to press charges off, sir. I'm going to do this right here. You lie all over my business with your shit. You, don't even well, you know what? I've served this country for your freedom. You come here and die, stuff, sir. Oh, yes. Blood. I bled for this country, sir. The United States Army, Death Mountain Division. I bled for your constitutional rights. You're going to right to assault me, though. I'm breaking the law. And you're on video. And you're on video, sir.
Uh, but they hate the message of the gospel. That's fine, I'll leave, officer. They hate the message. God bless you, officers. I'm not going to press charges. That's fine. I have it on video, sir. Yeah, I have it on video. He assaulted me, sir. I'm going across the street, but he assaulted me. So I have it on press charges. Right? Because we live in a constitution. A constitutional country. So people cannot do not have the right to assault people. Correct? Well, he assaulted me, so why, why are you coming up? Why is he still there? I'll turn it down, but why, why are you not doing anything with him? I don't know what happened. That's why I'm here. He assaulted me. That's your officer. Saw it. That's your officer. That's why they came up. He assaulted me. Sir. So he, he actually broke the law. I didn't break the law. God bless you, officer. God bless you. I was crossing the street, but I'm going to tell you, as an officer, that badge will not help you. On the day of God's judgment, because you'll be judged before a holy God, Jehovah God. We will all be judged. We will all have to give an account. We will all have to stand before a holy God and give an account. Amen. And God is going to judge. God will deal with it. I pray for mercy. I have no ill will. I take no offense. Hallelujah. The only reason you're convicted is because you're walking in sin. And sin leads to death. The wage of sin leads to death. Amen. The wage of sin leads to death, but the gift of eternal life is through Christ Jesus our Lord. That's why you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you do not have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are so guilty. You are a condemned criminal. You are guilty. You have broken God's law. You will be judged as a condemned criminal. And God is holy. He's not going to respect you. God is no respecter of person. He is going to throw your filthy carcasses in a hellfire. For God is angry with the wicked every day. His righteous indignation of the wrath of God as a hot furnace. You will be thrown in hellfire forever. Hell is nothing but weeping. Weeping, weeping, weeping. Millions, trillions of souls weeping for eternity. Millions, trillions of souls. Trillions upon trillions of souls weeping for eternity. Weeping, we, that's all you're going to hear is weeping trillions of souls. It's going to be deafening for you. It's hellfire. It's outer darkness. It's nothing but old gnashing of teeth, eternal suffering, eternal torment. The smoke of your torment rises forever in hellfire. There is no rest for the wicked. You're not going to take a nap. You're not going to be able to close your eyes. Oh, it's just weeping and gnashing of teeth forever, screaming you in agony. You will have all eternity to contemplate the error of your way. Oh, do not dare that think that God is a man like you am I. God is not a man that he should lie. God said it, it shall be so. He will judge you. You will give an account for every word you have spoken, let alone every action. Oh, God is merciful. God is merciful. God bless you with repentance. Turn to Jesus Christ before it's too late. You need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Without Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will be judged and condemned and slain. God, Jesus Christ said, fear not him who can destroy body, but afterwards have no power over your soul. Jesus Christ said, I will tell you who to fear. Fear him who can destroy body and soul and cast him into hell. Cast him into hell. Cast him into hell. Sin leads to hell. Sin leads to death. The second death, your soul, oh, why should we die? Tell us why should we die? Let's drink and eat for tomorrow we die. Is that how you live your life? It's reckless. Do not be reckless with your soul. God cares about your precious souls. God cares about your precious souls. Do you care? Do you care about Jesus Christ? Many people say they believe in Jesus Christ, but they are hypocrites. Jesus Christ is against the hypocrites. Jesus Christ came against the hypocrites. Do not be a hypocrite, sir. Do not be a religious hypocrite. Your Catholic faith will not save you. Your Baptist faith will not save you. Apart from Jesus Christ, you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He's very real. He's looking down right now on all the children of disobedience. He is restraining his hand of judgment. He has not come back yet. Amen. The hand of grace is still extended to you. That you would have the church, but the wrath, the, the, the wrath of God will not abide in you anymore. That you would be washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Hallelujah. Forgiveness. Christ's forgiveness is wonderful. Oh, the forgiveness of God. Who can compare? Who can compare? Who can know? Who can give him? Who can understand his ways? His wonderful ways of God. Who willingly, but Jesus Christ, who is God, that he will willingly lay down his life. He is fully God and fully man. Fully God and fully man. Chicago. We plead for you. We plead with your souls. Oh, we're here to wake you up to righteousness. Will you wake up to righteousness? You have ears to hear. You have eyes to see. And you've been blinded by the pitch of the power of the air. It's in this world. This world is perishing. This world is coming to an end. There's an end to things. There's an end to you. You have an end. You have an appointment with the Holy God. And you're not ready to stand before Him without Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'm going to tell you, you are going to burn in hell forever. You're going to burn in hell.
the devil cast forever without Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. There's only one mediator between God and man. The man, Jesus Christ, Chicago. You need to repent, humble yourself, and turn to Jesus Christ before it's too late. I'm here to tell you, when you hear and find yourself in hell, you're going to regret that you ignored the messengers. You're going to regret that you didn't repent and believe the gospel. You're going to repent that you mouthed the, the, the gospel teachers and you assaulted them. And you spat on them. Oh, praise God. We glory. We rejoice. We rejoice. We rejoice. Glory to God, hallelujah. You rejoice. The -E -E. Amen. The B-I-B-R-E, hallelujah. You better get right with God. That's right. Oh, Repent or perish. Glory to God. Amen. Oh, sin is shameful. Sin is shameful. Let me tell you, sin is shameful, people. Oh, it's, oh, I live in shame. I live in shame for most of my life. Homosexuality is sin. Jesus. Jesus said, if you're a lesbian, that is sin. That's right. Jesus. That's right. Jesus said, smoking cigarettes is sin. Vapor. Jesus said, lying is sin. That's right. What is sin? What is missing the mark? Jesus said, pride. Pride is sin. Pride is missing the mark. Hallelujah. Pride. When you. I did a lap. Jesus. Oh. I got assaulted. I got assaulted over there. I'm fine, brother. I'm rejoicing. That man was convicted. I'm going to do another lap. Another victory lap. Do you want to come with me? Yeah. yeah. Can you hold the sign? Yeah. Yeah, you can hold that. Hold it. Hold the sign. I got this. We're going to do a lap. Yeah, victory lap. Jesus is whom you will stand before when you die. Jesus. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the one who sits upon the throne. Jesus Christ. Are you ready to meet him? You know? Are you friends with God? Are you friends with Jesus? You walk in the light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If you walk in darkness. You love darkness. Your pursuit is sin. You're pursuing sin and pleasure. Or are you pursuing Jesus? Do you desire to walk with Jesus. Do you desire to know Jesus? Do you desire to serve Jesus? Do you desire to confess your sin and have Jesus Christ blot out your sin? If you confess your sins, Jesus Christ is faithful and just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You have sinned, Jesus came to deliver you from your sin. You are done with this wicked, Jesus came to heal your wicked heart. Will you repent? Jesus commands you to repent. Jesus said the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Jesus is the one that commands all men everywhere to repent because he speaks his faith. And what you should have said is righteousness. How am I finishing proof by raising this man, Jesus, from the dead? Jesus conquered over sin and death. Jesus! Oh, he is the one. This divine exchange that Jesus became sin with all of our sinfulness, that we might be made righteous with all of his righteousness. Jesus! This divine exchange. He was broken that we might be healed. He became Jesus Christ paid the debt that you owe. Jesus Christ, he was broken. He was bruised. He was beat. Jesus Christ, who hung on the cross. Jesus. Praise God, praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is going to come back. He's not your Lord and Savior. It's going to be a bad days for you when you stand before a holy God. You're going to give an account for every word you've spoken, every sin. The wrath of God still abides on you, the children of disobedience. Oh, but you can come to the mercy of the grace of God, the forgiveness of sins. Amen. That you would be a redeemed child of God, no longer a vessel of God's wrath, but a vessel of mercy. Amen. Become a Christian, a born-again Christian. Those are the only Christians, born-again Christians. If you're not a born-again Christian, you're not really a Christian. Christian means you belong to God. 
You know what I mean? You are of God. You are a bond servant of God. That's what born. You're a disciple of Jesus Christ. If you're not a disciple. You're not your master. It means you're not your Lord. Then you're not a Christian. You're a child of faith and a child of disobedience. You're still the wrath of God abides on you. So we continue on in sin that grace may abound. God forbid. God forbid. God freed us from sin that we are no longer slaves to sin, but we become servants of righteousness. Hallelujah. The everlasting words of God. I'm giving you the everlasting word of God. Folks, I don't know how to preach. I can't I preach this. This is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. God says, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Glory to God. God is spirit. He seeks those who worship Him in spirit and truth. You're not worshiping God. You're worshiping Satan. You're worshiping yourself. Satan wants you to worship yourself. Self-worship. Self-idolatrous worship. That's the condition of condemned man, is that he rejects God. The carnal man is an enmity with God. He cannot comprehend the things of God. You're an enemy of God. You have, you have made yourself a friend of the world. You're an adulterer and adulteresses. And God says, you are an enemy of God. If you are an enemy of God and you die in your sin, you will be the of the condemnation and wrath of God. The wrath of God, the judgment of God, he will throw you in a hellfire of people here. Oh, you don't want to go to hell. Hell is horrible. There's no beer in hell. There's no parties in hell. There's no lesbian sex in hell. No heterosexual in hell. No more orgies. No more uh, things you do with your mouth. Disgusting things you do. Sodomy is sin. Whether you're a man or a woman and you're sodom like God, it's hatred. It's an abomination. Your anus was not meant for uh, as an entry point. It's an exit. It's an exit. See, God is perfect. He knows physical mistakes. You cannot have a baby with sodomy. Amen. Sex between a man and a woman. Holy matrimony for marriage is holy. And the marital bed undefiled. But you have defiled yourself. You have defiled yourself of all manner of wickedness and unrighteousness. Amen. It's sin. Ungodly. If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Where shall they appear? Do you know if you're going to be in heaven? How do you know? How are you going to get there? How are you going to get to heaven? Can anyone answer that? How are you going to get to heaven? Do you even think about heaven? Do you even consider heaven? Or have you been blinded so much by the Satan himself, the angel of light? Have you been blinded by these fake pastors, these shepherds that are not of the Lord, these false prophets, these false teachers teaching doctrines of devils? Have your false pastors from the devil told you it's okay to come here and drink? I have a job. It's to tell you to, to repent before you perish, sir. It's the best job in the world. What's your job? To sin? What's your job? To sin? To be a hypocrite? To be a pervert? To be a hater of God? I'm a pervert. I love I know you're a pervert. That's why you need to repent. Sir, is that your wife? I'm sure she's not very proud of you being a pervert, sir. I'm sure she's not proud of you looking at porn and masturbating, sir. Oh, masturbation is disgusting. It's gross. Yes, Jesus is number one. You can be free from sin too. You know why rebellious women give the preacher the middle finger? Because they love having their little boy men as their little puppets. Women love having their boy men as little puppets. God bless you. Well, you tell me where I can go. I have families right there. There's nobody trying to feed their families right there. On the other side of the street? People inside trying to feed their families. We all work here. You're literally not the other day. Where can I go? Because I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want you to go. Work for, the, work for the heavenly things, not the things okay, that perish. Because you store up treasure in heaven, my man. Sure Jesus, would love you. Jesus sent me here. Yes, he did. He okay. overturned tables. Did you know that? Oh, wow. He overturned oh, tables and fashioned a whip. I care for your soul. I can't. Right? Oh, I'm not interrupting that, sir. You're, you're making as much money as you did last weekend on this exact day as to this yesterday. What's that? I wasn't here last weekend. Yeah, but I guarantee that, you know, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world? God bless you with your filthy mouth. I used to have a filthy mouth. You know that? I used to have a filthy mouth. Every other word was an F mouth. And an F mouth. You know what it says? Jesus Christ says that it's not what goes in. It's not what goes in a man that defiles him. It's what comes out of a man. It's what comes out. Oh, sir, don't, don't, don't damn God. God's not going to be damned. You're going to be damned right now, but you don't have to be damned, sir. You can be free from sin. You can become a, a child of God, sir. I'm here pleading with you, your precious soul. Your soul is worth too much. You know, this job, you know, you're going to be fired from this job within a year anyways. You're not going to be at this job much longer, sir. So what is a profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul in hell? What shall a man pay for his soul? So you can't pay anything, sir. Jesus Christ paid your sin debt for those who believe. See, right now you're an enemy of God. It means you're an enemy of God. You're against the gospel preacher, the messenger of God. If you reject the ones that Jesus sent, you reject them himself. He said you don't care. You say you don't believe. Your unbelief will send you straight to hell. The cowardly, the fearful, and the unbelieving will be thrown in the lake of fire. All those who are sexually immoral, all those who love a lie, all those who are sorcerers and murderers will be burning in the lake of fire. All those who love the cubs more than Jesus will be burning in the lake of fire. Woe to you who leave one of these little ones that believe in me. Woe to you who want to lead one of these little ones that believe in me to sin. 
It would be better for you had a millstone be been tied around your neck. You don't want to lead your children away from Jesus. You want to lead them to Jesus, for God made us all. You want to lead them to the cross of Jesus, to teach them the truth of Jesus, that they would become children of light, not of darkness. What fellowship does light have with darkness? No, there's no fellowship between light and darkness. No, God is light. Amen. He is light. He has no fellowship with darkness. So lead your children to the cross of Jesus. Lead your children the way they should go and they will not depart from it. I'm here to tell you there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of that way is death. The way end of that way is death. And the wages of sin is death. Amen. Oh, Chicago, you're so full of pride, Chicago. The reason you hate the gospel is because you're so full of yourself. Oh, Chicago, you're so full of yourself. This is the, one of the most prideful cities I've ever been to. This is the, the, the Chicago Cubs were the first, the first big MLB baseball team to celebrate homosexuality. God hates homosexuality. God hates homosexuality. Yes, yes. But the good news is you can become a former homosexual. If you are, if you are a slave to the homosexual demons, Jesus Christ can kick out those demons from your life. Yes, don't believe the lie. Don't believe the lie of the devil that you as a man can lay with another man as a woman. Women, don't believe the lie that you can kill your babies in the womb. Your body's not your choice. Your body was bought at a price, amen. It was in your body. God made your body to be a temple for the Holy Spirit of God. God is holy. Shall we unite Christ with our harlot? God forbid. Do not sin against your body. He who sins against his body sins against himself. Oh, you're storing up wrath. You're storing up the judgment of God. This restaurant is going to be gone. Big Star is going to be gone. Amen. Oh, it's going to be gone. This day is going to be over. Some of you won't make it to the end of the week. If you die in your sin, you will burn in a double cell forever for all eternity. You have eternity to contemplate the error of your way for ignoring the message of the gospel. See, that, like, most of these churches don't teach you the gospel because they don't actually serve God. They serve themselves. They, they, they want, they're making merchandise of God's people. They give you ear-tickling messages. I'm giving you the pure, unfiltered, unadulterated mercy message of Jesus Christ. That's why it cuts, because the word of God is sharper than any double-edged sword. It's sharper, it, it divides. The word of God divides. Jesus Christ said, do not think I came to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. Amen. He has come to set at variance, at, at variance a man of his own household will become his enemies. Father will become, a son will become against father and mother against daughter and daughter-in-law. And a member of one's own household will become his enemies. So what about you, sir? Do you believe Jesus Christ is Lord? Is he your Lord? Is he your Savior? Do you believe that, sir? Or are you choosing hell? Don't choose hell. I don't want you to burn in hell. I want you to choose Jesus Christ. Are you sure it says the real king? Who's the real king is Jesus Christ. He's the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He's the God of gods. Amen. At the mention of the name of Jesus Christ, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Uh, things of heaven and things in earth and things on the earth that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father Amen uh, the soul every soul belongs to God the soul of the Father belongs to God the soul of the Son belongs to God and the soul that sins shall die do not die in your sin and end up in hell forever eternity is a long time to be wrong folks if I'm wrong I have to be pitied of all men uh, but I'm not wrong because all the God has been revealed the wrath of God has been revealed, but you hold the truth in unrighteousness. You hold the truth in unrighteousness because you're infected with sin. Sin is the real disease, and Jesus Christ is the cure. Amen. He defeated sin and death. Amen. In His right hand, He has the keys of sin and of hell and death. Amen. He defeated the devil. He defeated Satan, though our last enemy is death. Amen. Uh, if, you, if when you end your life and you are born again Christian, it's just you just you're blessing with the body's present with the Lord. You can have that assur blessed assurance. Amen. You can have the confidence, I'm not, that you will be with Jesus Christ forever, amen. God bless you with repentance. God bless you with salvation, faith. For the devils, you do well to say God is one. Even the devils believe, and they tremble, and they tremble, and they tremble. Do you tremble? Do you fear God? Do you fear God? Do you fear God? No, what you fear is not making money. You fear uh, silly things, carnal things. You fear death, amen. But for a child of God, there is no fear. No fear, because perfect love casts out all fear. Because fear has to do with torment. Amen. And he who fears has not been perfected. Amen. But we are made perfect in Jesus Christ. Perfect means holy, complete. You're not lacking anything. You don't lack anything. So you need to cut your hair and turn to Jesus Christ. You're not meant to be a feminine. You're meant to be a man. God makes no mistakes. He made you perfect. Uh, but you've chosen the imperfect world because sin is in this world. Sin is in this world, people. Of a God, He came to reconcile us, to give us eternal life. Amen. Amen. Time is short, people. I'm here to tell you, time is short. It goes by quick. I've seen hundreds of people die in my lifetime, and I'll tell you, those people that I saw die when I worked for New York Fire Department, 
those people that died, they didn't think that was going to be their last day. They didn't think that would be their last day. Now, many people died. They, they didn't wake up thinking that would be their last day. There's accidents. There's diseases. There's cancers. There's violence. There's wars. That's these police officers. They see it. As a firefighter, I saw it. Hundreds of people die, and they didn't think that would be their last day. They breathed their last breath. Their eyes glazed over. Their mouth opened wide. A lot of them died with a shock look on their face. A lot of them die, and they go to hell if they were not saved, if they were not born again children of God. If they never repented of their sin, they died as guilty, convicted criminals, still condemned in their sin. Amen. It's too late. Once you die, there is no second chance. There is no purgatory. There are, the Catholics teach doctrines of devils. There is no purgatory. You're not going to get a second chance, folks. They're trying, the chance is right now that you would hear the gospel preaching, that you would be convicted about your sins, that you would understand that if you died right now and stood before God, He would say, you are not one of mine. Amen. Jesus Christ is going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Welcome into the kingdom. Or He's going to say, depart from me, for I never knew you. Ye that work iniquity, sin, lawlessness. You break God's law, you are a criminal. If He's stolen, you are a thief. If you lied, you are a liar, a fraud, an extortioner. Amen. Oh, how much more, how much more do we deserve? You who continue willfully sinning, knowing it's wrong, but you do it anyways. Oh, how much more do we deserve, knowing that under the law that we deserve death, how much more punishment do we deserve? How much more punishment do we deserve, considering the blood of Jesus Christ worthy to be trampled underfoot? You know, when you choose sin, when you choose sin, no, you can be free from that. I'm here to tell you, oh, no drunkard will inherit the kingdom of God. The Apostle Paul, whom it was given a, 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 an incredible knowledge of the Word, a steward of the Word of God, a steward of the mysteries of the Gospel, he said this, Do not be deceived, the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. I'm here to tell you, folks, you're, you're forsaking your inheritance. God wants to give you the gift of eternal life, but you do not consider yourself worthy of salvation. You have chosen instead the fool's way. You have chosen the broad road that leads to destruction. Straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. If you be there to find it, you can find it. Jesus Christ, He is that way. He is that way. No, you know, alcohol, being a drunkard, leads you to hell. The devil says, no beer in hell. I'm going to tell you, no water in hell. You know, but when you're filled by the Holy Spirit, you don't need beer. You don't need Heineken. You, need, you don't need Michelob. You don't need whiskey. You don't need tequila. You don't need marijuana. You don't need pornography. You don't need your, your, your whatever it is you're turning to. You don't need weed. No, when you're filled with the Spirit, amen, God gives you gifts. He's the, he's the Father's lights. God is the gift. Father, he's the giver. He's the gift giver for those who are humble. You know, if you're having children, have a child that's disobedient, you're not going to give them the extra ice cream. You have a child that's disobedient, you're not going to take them to the park and go play. No, he's gonna, if you're a good parent, you're going to discipline that child. That child is going to be put in time out after you warn him and disobey you again. Then you might have to spank that child. The problem is, a lot of you haven't been spanked by your children. Now, God is going to spank you straight in hellfire because you decided to reject him and be live as a rebellious woman. You decided to live as a rebellious woman instead of a submitted a holy woman of God covering yourself, dressed in modesty, not with pearls and not with adorning of her body, but with a spirit of meekness, with a spirit of meekness that is precious in the sight of God. Amen. A woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. A holy woman. God made women to be holy, but so many women today want to kill their babies. They want to kill their babies. They want to, be, they want to have unnatural relationships with other women. Amen. God bless you, officer. God bless you. God bless you. We, we, we pray for order, for God is a God of order. He's not the author of confusion. He's not the author of confusion. Many of you are confused. You're lost and confused, and you need to be found by the amazing grace of God. How many of us sing that song? You've heard it's like, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. But, you know, you're forsaking them. It's not going to be amazing grace for you when you reject Christ. These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, says the Lord. Their heart is far from me, says the Lord, because the heart, the heart of man is above all things deceitful. Some people say, God knows my heart. Yes, God knows your heart, and he still allows you to live, because the heart of man is wicked. It does nothing but wicked. It thinks nothing but wicked thoughts. It, it has nothing but wicked thoughts. It speaks wicked things. It does wicked things. God hates it. God hates, and he loves. Yes, he loves his friends. There is no greater love than to die for one's friends, and ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command. Do you know why? Because this law is written on our hearts. 
Amen. It becomes a delight. It is not a burden. Oh, to, to be, to commune, to walk with God. Amen. To call on His name, to pray and know He hears your prayers. Amen. To put our faith and trust in Him. Amen. And all the, all the different ways that your faith is, your most holy faith is built up, keeping us in the love of God, praying on all times in the Spirit. Hallelujah. That He might present Himself, that He might present us to Him with exceeding joy. Amen. God is coming back for a holy people, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. Amen. Those who are called upon the name of the Lord, those who have the mark of the Lord, not you, not if you're ungodly, not if you're not a born again Christian, you have the mark of death. Those who love, those who hate me, says the Lord, love death. They love death. That's why you can't stand the gospel of Jesus Christ, because right now you have prideful, you are full of pride and vanity and covetousness, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And sexual immorality. Jesus Christ said, if the world hates you, know that it hated me first, because I tell them their deeds are evil. Arrepiéntanse, pecadores. Arrepiéntanse, pecadores, porque Jesús va a juzgar en justicia. El Señor viene en fuego y te va a tirar en el infierno si tú sigues en tu pecado, pecador. Si tú sigues en tu blasfemando el nombre de Jesús. Si tú sigues en tu inmoralidad. Oh, Jesús dijo, si tú tienes odio en tu corazón, Tú eres un matador, y ningún matador va a heredar el reino de Dios. Necesitas humillarse. You need to humble yourself before God. God, His face is against those who do evil. He will erase them out of His memory. God's face is against those who do evil. He will erase them from His memory. You're going to be erased, people. You're not going to even be a memory. You're going to die. Your name's not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your name's not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. No, your name is not written. In the Lamb's Book of Life, you're going to be erased. You're going to be erased. You're going to be erased. You're going to be judged before God. Do not be deceived. God will not be mocked. You're not going to mock God. You're not going to be a tough guy before God. You're not going to tell God what to do. You're going to be pleading for God's mercy. You're going to be begging for His mercy. There's going to be no mercy to you. There's going to be no mercy to you, but only judgment, only wrath. When He throws your filthy carcass in the hellfire, you're not going to be selling cups, shirts of the Cubs game. No, you're going to be burning in hell forever. You're going to be weeping and screaming for mercy, but no mercy is going to come because you rejected the gospel, the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, the good news of Jesus Christ. You did not consider yourself worthy of salvation. You consider yourself worthy of hell, fire, and judgment. You love your sin and you hate Jesus because you're full of hypocrisy. You're full of wickedness. You're full of evil and the poison of ass. You're full of all you brood of vipers who has warned you of the wrath of God to come. We're out here warning you in love. Love warns. Love with love does not stay quiet. Love rejoices in the truth, not in the lie. You love the lie. You hate Jesus Christ. You're hypocrites. You need, you need to repent of your sins before you burn in hell forever. Your God wants, does not want any to perish, but that you repent. But don't love your homosex more than Jesus. Don't love your porn uh, subscription more than Jesus. Don't love your, your, your stupid cup game more than Jesus. And I don't love this stupid game more than Jesus. Baseball can't save you. Baseball can't save you. None of these baseball players even know who you are. They don't care about you. But you worship your idols, which is yourself. You really worship yourself. You're self-centered. You hate God. You hate Jesus. And he hates you. Yeah, because you are prideful, full of pride. You're going to burn in hell forever. You're going to be as flames of fire. Arrepiéntanse, pecadores. Arrepiéntanse, hipócritas. Arrepiéntanse si tienes odio en tu corazón. El Señor dice que tú eres el matador. Arrepiéntanse, perece. Oh, I'm not going to say it in an infierno. Repent or perish, or you will burn an everlasting fire. You're not going to be selling shirts. You're not going to be buying tickets. You're not going to be selling peanuts. You're not going to be eating hot dogs when you burn in hell. There is no hot dogs. They have been burnt up. There is no water. No, there is no Cubs game in hell. It's been canceled due to the fire. The fire is hell. Hell, hell is not a place God wants any to go. Hell was made for the devil, a mighty angel, and all the angels that rebelled against God, and all the wicked shall burn in hell forever because they rejected the goodness. Is. What more does God have to do? What more does God have to do? He gave His only begotten Son. He died for His enemies a horrible death on the cross. Oh, repent of your filthiness, your wickedness, oh, your wicked, wicked hearts, your wicked thoughts. You hate the gospel because you are a child of Satan. See, if you are a child of God, you'd say hallelujah and amen to these words because it's the Spirit of God speaking through me. This is not me speaking. This is the Spirit of God speaking through me. Hallelujah to give them the lies, the words of life. Peter, who follow Peter, who follow Jesus, so they say, will you depart from me? Because they did not believe, they wanted Jesus. That's because not because they believed, because the valleys were full and many departed from him, never to walk with him again. Oh, you're a perverter. 
You're a pervert. You're a pervert. You know, it's only by the grace of God, so I can destroy you. It's only by the Holy Spirit that I don't destroy you, sir. That I don't destroy you, sir. I have 40 years on martial arts, so I can destroy you in about three seconds. But it's only by the Spirit of God. Uh, you know, I'm a man of peace, not a man of violence. But my Lord is a man of war. My Lord will utterly destroy you on the day of God's judgment, His righteous indignation against the wicked. The wicked will not stand in the congregation of the righteous. The wicked will be judged and thrown into hell fire forever. God wants that none perish. I pray for mercy for you, soul. So I pray for mercy for your soul. In the name of Jesus, that you are blessed with anal cancer if you're a sodomite. God will bless you with penile cancer if you're son of mine. A man's penis is not meant for a man's anus. It's wicked. It's wicked. But woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Woe to those who call light darkness and darkness for light. Woe to those who call bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. This world is upside down. Woe to those who call, want to hurry, want to wanna speed up the day of the Lord. It is not a day of light. It is a day of darkness. It is a day of great darkness, a great and terrible day of the Lord because most will be judged and they will suffer an eternal torment in hell. Many most will not enter in. Only a few will enter in. Only a few are the remnant of God. Oh, will you be the few or the many? Are you, are you the few or the many? Are you in the broad road leading to destruction? If you're going to this game, if you love cops more than Jesus, if, if this is your church, if this is what you worship, if this is your source of peace and joy instead of the Lord, then you are going to burn in the devil's hell because you are an idolater. Do not be deceived. No idolater will inherit the kingdom of heaven. The, you know, the cops cannot save you on the day. The cops are players need Jesus too. Uh, what will a prophet a man to gain the whole world? These baseball players' money will vanish with them. They will vanish with them. Oh, the covetous, the idolatry in this nation, they don't care about you. The cubs need to repent. The cubs need Jesus Christ. And then everybody needs Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, God humbled me. I used to be a wicked sinner like you, full of sin, millions of sins, millions of sins. The only sin I didn't have was homosexuality. I did pretty much every other sin. All manner of sexual morality, all manner of lies and stealing. Oh, I was full of idolatry and pride. But God humbled me. Praise the Lord. He revealed himself to me by the power of his spirit and his word. You see, it's by his, his faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It's the mighty word of God working in you. By your, the word of God is a discerner of the thoughts of man. That's why people hate the word of God. That's why you're shaking your head as you go by because you know you love your sin more than God. You hate Jesus. You would try to put him on the cross if he could again. You would mock him on the cross. You would be burning in hell if you died right now in your sin. You're going to burn in hell forever. You're not going to shake your head. You're going to be screaming for God. Jesus is number one. Amen. Don't use the middle finger. Use the index finger though because God will not be mocked. You're going to give a judgment to God for getting the preacher the middle finger. I pray for mercy. Jesus Christ said all sins will be forgiven including a blessing of the name of the Son of Man, but the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, that will not be forgiven. That will not be forgiven. Uh, Jesus Christ, His mercy, His forgiveness, so that He would die for us, that He would die for the unrighteous. Uh, uh, many might, might die for a righteous man, but for an unrighteous man. Would He die for your enemies? Would you love your enemies? Jesus Christ commands us to love our enemies. Amen. To do good to them, to do evil to us, to pray for them. Amen. That curse us. Amen. We come out here in love. We come out here in truth. The love hurts because you're not walking in the truth. That's the only reason it hurts, because you're walking in the lie. And the word of God cuts. It is sharper than any double-edged sword. It cuts. If my words offend you, it's because you're walking in darkness. Now, the light that came in the world, but men love darkness more than the light. I'm here to tell you, people, time is short. You're going to die. Ten out of ten people die. And you're going to stand before a holy God. Amen. If you're not born again, born of the Spirit of God, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. You will not enter in the kingdom of heaven. No, it's going to be in a twinkling of an eye and those like me and the other saints of God will no longer be here. We'll be caught up in the clouds. Those who slept first and those who remain will be caught up with our Lord in heaven in new heavenly bodies, eternal bodies. Hallelujah. Nothing but joy. The fullness of joy. We will know Him as we have been known from the beginning. We will know Jesus as He has known us in the beginning. The sun will not even exist because He is our light. Praise the Lord and Maranatha, the Spirit and the bride say, come, glory to God. But you will still be here to suffer the wrath of God. You will still be here to suffer the judgments of God. You will, you will cry out that the mountains cover you and it won't defend you on that day because you rejected the gospel. You refused to repent and uh, you will serve justice, judgments of God up here. They are life. Oh, they're perfect. The judgment of God is perfect. You will, you will perfectly deserve hell because you rejected salvation. You rejected Jesus Christ. Yeah, you didn't count yourself worthy of salvation. Oh, I'm here to tell you, people, you don't have to go to hell. 
You don't have to go to hell. You can choose Jesus Christ today as your Savior, your Lord, and your Savior. Make him your Lord, people, before you burn in hell. Before you burn in hell. You want to burn in hell forever, people? You don't want to burn in hell? No. God wants that none should perish, but they would have everlasting life. That they would have everlasting life. You know? Not everlasting condemnation. You know, oh, God, Jesus doesn't want anyone to go to hell. He doesn't. What more does he have to do, people? What more does he have to do? Oh, what more does he have to do, people? Oh, God is love, you know? Look, his might and his grace and his glory in that situation, whatever it may be, demonstrate his benevolence in your life and help set you free, folks. Help set you free. We love you, Chicago. You know, we want you to have that relationship with Jesus Christ. That's why we come out. I'll help you out, brother. That's why we come out and preach. Like, because it's the most important thing you'll ever do, you know? It's the most important thing you'll ever do. You know that, sir? I was like, Lord, he loves you. you got to turn to him, sir. And if you knew Christ, you'd take that weed hat off and you'd be, you'd be praising God. I promise you that. Because marijuana is a sin, folks, and take you to hell. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, walking about his weary mind, seeking him to be able to Thank you, brother. Brother Gabriel, thank you for the sign, brother. I can use the sign in Dallas. I can use the sign in Dallas. It can evict many souls. It's been very powerful here in Chicago. It's been evicted many people. Give them hope for Jesus Christ. Who wants desperately for you not to perish. He wants you to be in communion with him. But you make that choice, folks. It's up to you, ultimately. You have the choice to make. And I heed you, I implore you today, choose Jesus Christ for the difference of sin. God bless you. God bless you. It's real. the saints of God. Hallelujah. Saints of God. God bless you. Amen. Time is short. Praise God. Chicago has been taken over for Jesus. Amen. Puerto Rico, arrepiéntanse. Boricua, Boricua, arrepiéntanse, pecador. Arrepiéntanse o van a perecer al infierno. Sí, tú necesitas Jesús. Pray for the seed that was that was uh, that was uh, sown. Pray for the seed. This is hard ground. Chicago is hard, hard, hard ground. But nothing is impossible for us. And, uh, God sent His saints of God, and the word of God never returns void. Says my Lord, but it shall accomplish everything 
that he intended to the thing he sent it to. Praise God. We pray for Chicago to repent, to humble herself, to call upon the Lord. They might be saved, granted repentance and true salvation faith, receive the Holy Spirit, become born again, children of God, that they would be born again, children of God, no longer children of Satan, no longer children of disobedience. Man, God is merciful, but he's also judgment. It's a judgment of God. This is the good news. If we don't understand the judgment of God, the good news sounds like a fairy tale. But we're all going to die, people. Ten out of ten people are going to die. You're going to stand before a holy God. You have an appointment with a holy God. The Cubs can't save you. Baseball can't save you. Your mother's faith can't save you. Your wife's faith can't save you. Only Jesus Christ can save you. Mighty to save you. God bless you. Get on the recording.